Hey, what's up? This is Steve Eckert here, United States Marine and instructor of the project. Today, what we're going to do is go through the project physical fitness test called the 302. I'm going to explain the test to you and give you a clear demonstration of how to perform the entire test. So here's how it breaks down. It's called the 302 because there are three exercises with a mile on each end of it, bookending it. So it breaks down just like this. There's a one mile run followed immediately by 100 push-ups, 100 squat thrusts, and 100 crawl outs immediately into another one mile run. Now that all doesn't have to be done straight through, as in you don't have to do 100 push-ups in one set. You break it down how you need to. It's just a running clock from beginning to end. The 302 PFT Project Fitness Test. Now, here's the thing. You have 75 minutes to complete this entire test. That is the maximum allotted time. Now, it doesn't mean you should be getting, aiming to get it in only 75 minutes. You should be getting as low of a time as possible. And every time you repeat the test, your number one goal is to beat your previous time. Again, it's a running clock. I'm going to demonstrate all these exercises for you. And here's the thing. If for some reason you can't get this in time under the 75 minutes, or you can't do any of these exercises to completion, you have plenty of time with a six-week program we're going to hook you up with to help you prepare for the project so that you can dominate the 302 PFT Project Fitness Test. So the one-mile run, let's start off. You're going to start off fresh. You're going to properly make, make sure you're properly warmed up, hydrated, rested, get a nice warm-up going, which we'll show you in a separate video, and then you're just going to hit a one-mile run as hard as you can, and it needs to be an exactly one-mile run. Now, when you finish the run, you want to have it spaced out that you're in the exact finishing, in the exact location where you're going to do your three exercises. You don't want to be finishing the one mile run and then have to go all the way back to another location or indoors, whatever it is, too far away because it's a running clock. You cannot pause the clock from when you finish the run to start those exercises. So again, the three exercises are push-ups, squat thrusts, and crawl outs. So let me demonstrate you those, put those exercises for you real quick because you might think you know how to do them but you probably aren't gonna be doing them the right way. We're not gonna be doing these way you see on the internet and on YouTube, we're doing them project style. So we're gonna start with the push-up. Obviously you know what a push-up is. What we're not gonna do is have our feet apart. So let's go with our feet totally together, touching. They have to be touching, heel to heel, toe to toe. Your hands could be as far or as close as you want. I'd recommend about shoulder width, maybe a little slightly wider. You need to come all the way down until your chest and your chest only touches the floor and come on up. So you cannot go to here. That is not going to count. If your feet come apart, even just for an inch for one rep, that is not going to count. The feet together, chest touching the floor, and coming up to full extension in the elbows. So tap the floor, drive up. If you even go all the way this low down without tapping the floor and come up, that is not going to count as a rep. Do not let your hips sink down to the floor. Don't do a wide stance. Again, feet together, chest taps the floor, come up. The best way to do this is to have your elbows tucked in a little bit so you're working your chest, your shoulders, and your triceps. Don't rely on just your chest, but don't go in so tight where you're working on just your triceps because they're gonna burn out. Now, you're not expected to do 100 push-ups straight in a row. If you can, good for you, but probably doing them the right way, project style, you're not gonna be able to do 100 push-ups project style. Break them up. Play around with it. Play around with the numbers. Break them up. Maybe sets of 20, sets of 15, sets of 10. Towards the end, as you're getting more tired, sets of five. Whatever it takes to get to 100 full project push-ups as quick as possible. Keep in mind, though, you're going to be doing these push-ups after just completing a, a one-mile maximum effort run. So it's going to be a little different of effect once you hit the floor and doing those push-ups because you're going to be slightly out of breath. So keep that in mind when you're practicing your push-ups in between during your workouts. Don't always just practice the push-ups when you're fresh. Practice them when your heart rate is elevated, when you're tired, when you're out of breath. So it's gonna simulate exactly how, how it's gonna feel during the 302 PFT. Now the next exercise is a squat thrust. A squat thrust is not a burpee or whatever else you, you call on the internet. There's no push-up involved. There's no jump involved. You're literally standing up straight. You're squatting straight down to the floor. Your hands have to be within range of your feet. You're jumping back to the push-up position, jumping forward, standing straight up with full hip extension. So again, you're not just flopping over at the waist. You're not reaching all the way forward here and just flopping down. It has to be a squat. 
You're squatting down. You could go on your fingertips, your knuckles, your hands, whatever way works for you. Squatting down, jump back to a full push-up position. Now back here, your feet can be apart or together when you jump back, whatever you want. When you jump forward, I'd suggest bringing your feet about shoulder width apart. So look, I could squat up with power, with muscle. What you don't want to do is jump forward with your feet together. Look at this. I'm on my toes. I'm going to screw up my knees. I'm also not going to have as much efficiency. You're going to get more tired quicker and not use the right muscles in your quads and your glutes. Think about other things too. Although you're going to be out of breath doing these, think about your upper body should be strong and sturdy. Think about this as a core exercise. Every exercise is a core exercise. Keep that tight. That's what's going to keep you connected from the upper to the lower body. So again, you're squatting down, jump back, jump in, up. That'd be one. Right back down, up. Nice and smooth. It's a four count movement. Down, back, in, and up. When you stand up, you can't just be slumped over here. It has to have full extension. So that's exercise number two of the 302 PFT. Exercise three is the crawl out. Crawl out's gonna be the opposite of the squat thrust. So on the squat thrust, your hands stayed in place and your feet were moving. The crawl out, your feet are gonna stay in place and your hands are gonna be moving. Here, I'd suggest, again, you could put your feet as close as you want, as wide as you want. I'd suggest slightly wider than shoulder width, wider than you had for a basic squat because you need some space to get down there and you want a good base to have some power. You're gonna squat down, crawl all the way out to the push-up position till your hips are totally straight and both hands lined up under your shoulders. So if you go further, that's fine, but you can't cut it short to just here. They both have to clear your shoulders. Crawl back in, squat up. Now you could bend your knees on this or keep them straight. Tech, you could go like this if you wanted to, lean over the waist, it's gonna slow you down, it's gonna strain you and wear out the muscles in the wrong way. So I'd suggest squatting down fast, hands clear to your shoulders, right back up. Smooth out, full push-up position, right back up. Focus on your breathing on these. In through your nose, out through your mouth. On the push-up as well. When you're going down on the push-up, in through your nose. Let the speed of your breathing match the speed of your movement. So that was exercise number three, the crawl out. The second you're done with that, again, you want to be having all this in close proximity to each other because the second you're done with the crawl out, you need to start another one mile run. Now again, the same thing goes for that squat thrust and crawl. You don't have to complete 100 sets straight through. It's possible on the squat thrust and crawl to do it, but you might want a second to stretch your legs out. Keep those legs loose in between. Keep those shoulders loose. Stretch them. Shake them. Keeping the blood flowing. Sometimes taking a couple of seconds and breaking it down into little sets is going to be a faster overall time than trying to just bang it all out in one shot because you're gonna get, you're gonna slow down your reps. They're not gonna be as good a quality. Your techniques gonna start going out the window. So you play around, around with it and break it down however you need to. So, and, and each time you do this 302 project fitness test, play around with the numbers a little bit. Play around with the sequence of the, the number of reps that you're doing, whether you're doing sets of 10 or 15 or 20 or on the squat thrust, you wanna try a set and just do a nice slow, steady pace of 100. Can you do a slow, steady pace of 100 faster than you could do 10 sets of 10? Play around with it, but don't forget, that needs to be after the one mile run, after the 100 push-ups. So all those different ways, you could tweak this so many different ways to improve it, to get better. Here's the thing, if you can complete this test, this 302 Project Fitness test in under 75 minutes, which is 100% possible for an average, average activity level male, completely possible, if you can do that, you will have the strength, the conditioning, the coordination, the cardio, the endurance that's needed once you show up here for the project, for the actual 75 hours of fun that we're gonna have together. If you can complete this test in under 75 minutes, you will be physically prepared. And then we will help you get mentally and emotionally prepared to go with that physical. But here's the thing, we don't want you showing up to the project and end up ringing the bell because you are quitting because it was too hard physically. When it comes down to it, you know the project is a physical, mental, and emotional challenge. Now, the physical part, as hard as it might seem with all the cool, crazy stuff you see on, on the Instagram and on social media, the physical part is the easiest part. So I do not want to have someone show up to the project for your class and end up ringing the damn bell 
because it was too hard physically. So you're going to do, as long as you can pass this test, you'll be clear. Now, mentally and emotionally, that's where this real struggle comes in. So let's get that physical part out of the way. So you have nothing to worry about on the physical part. Is it going to be hard and challenging even though you can do it, pass this test? Hell yeah, it's going to be. But this is going to ensure that you have what it takes to survive the 75 hours of the physical test. So let's run through that one more time. It's a one mile run, 100 push-ups, 100 squat thrusts, 100 crawl outs, and another mile run. That's the 302 for the two miles of the run. And again, one, one other extra point that I just want to add in there. Once you get to exercise one, let's say you did the one mile run, you hit your set of push-ups. You cannot go on to the squat thrust to exercise number two until you completed 100 of the push-ups. So you can't, for instance, do 10 push-ups, 10 squat thrusts, 10 crawl outs, and then go back and 10 more push-ups. You cannot move on to the, the next segment until you completed the entire reps, 100 reps of the exercise before it. So you need to do the run, 100 push-ups, however you want to break it down, and then move on to the 100 squat thrusts, then move on to the 100 crawl outs, and right to the mile run. Keep this close together. I've done this several times. Sometimes where my running, where I finished the run, was far away from where I was going to do the exercises, whether you're outdoors, if it's raining, whatever it is, make sure you're in close proximity so you don't kill time in between. There is no pausing of the clock. Now, you are going to have to confirm and have proof that you can pass this test before you can even show up here for the project. And then when you show up here, day zero, once we pick you up that afternoon, the first thing we're going to do is, ad is administer this 302 PFT on you right off the bat on day zero to get started. And if you can't complete this when you show up here within 75 minutes, you will not be able to proceed with the rest of the project and you'll have to come back to a future class. So if you have any questions or comments, just let me know. That is the details of the project 302 PFT.